How about you people at home? What do you think? So could you hear any of that that I was doing? You couldn't? Okay, I'm going to sing the last verse again just to get back in the rhythm. I thought I was fixing things. transition from standing to sitting. So I'm Winterboy and this is my first live TV show. It's kind of funny too because when I did my first live radio show we had no vocal sound at all and I did the whole set. <laughs> we even had people calling up and telling the DJ, hey, you can't hear a damn thing. Oh, can I say words like that on television? What was that George Carlin thing? The seven words? Let me see. They were. So, um, in the audience tonight are the 20 people that I think, or more than that actually probably, but the 20 people that I feel have helped me the most in the last year and a half since I was born. So, uh, do you, can I move yet, or? I really can't do the next song sitting down.
So the next song I'm going to play is one of the first songs we wrote. Do you have volume here on the vocal? No? All right. It's good for the TV. And if it's good for the TV, it's good for us. All right, this is a song about work. I've been going through a lot of struggle around this issue of work. I have to work. I have to pay my bills. Music, unfortunately, demands your full time and attention long before it can afford to pay you for it. So I've become a not very good employee. I take too many days off. When I'm there, actually, they might be watching. <laughs> I'm sick every one of those times. And I dare you to prove otherwise. Yeah, you. No, I, I work for a good company now, but I'm in the doghouse because I've missed a couple of days of work my first month. And the problem is I, I'm meant to do music and I'm not meant to do any of the other things I've ever done. That's the problem. And I'm trying to resolve it. The very first job I ever held as a free, single adult it was in Susanville, California, in the Sierra Nevada mountains, or at the foot of the Sierra Nevada mountains. And I lived with Buster Chamberlain on his ranch. He had a horse ranch. And I lived in his little mobile home that he had parked behind his mobile home. And in the morning, he'd load up the backhoe, and I'd grab a shovel. And we go dig graves. And it's the most peaceful, relaxing job I ever had. And then the people would come for the funeral and we'd go play cards and smoke a joint or whatever we would do. And then the people would leave and we'd fill in the hole and go do it somewhere else. And I made good money. This is a song called Work and Homicide. Mr. You know.
try to contain your enthusiasm. <laughs> They're allowed to clap in a studio audience, right? right. Well, come on. It's really embarrassing, guys. Yeah, real good fans. We like him so much, when he's done, we just sit there. And he just soaks it up. Yeah. All right. So this is an autobiographical piece. It's called Make Me Happy. I guess I spent most of my adult life thinking that my number one mission was to find the right mate. And after 10 years of that nonsense, I ended up with nothing more than some good song fodder. And this is one of them. Every word in this song is true. Will until I pick 
Figure out what makes me happy. Figure out what makes me happy. Need to know what makes me happy. Thank you very much. I remember my very first show, and I had one fan. His name was David Hartwell. He was like my best friend, and he was the only guy there. And after the songs, he would go, Yay! Way to go! And it would echo off the walls. This is much better. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think we're going to do another song. This song's for Jess. She's not here tonight. I actually created a fan with this song. I, I wrote the song before I even knew her. And she liked it so much she came to a show. It's called Jess. A shotgun blast of lightning in the middle of a storm in the middle of the night. Jess, I don't know you, but I love you. Oh, you're half my age, but twice the human like a mockingbird in the dawn Her hands moving like monarchs coming home in the spring Her head turns on her ivory neck like God, turning to look at me yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shines on the sea below. But what I love most of all is the mystery of you. Jess, I don't know you, but I love you. When you get that quizzical look, I love you. Run across your face like a flock of blackbirds across the moon. Your voice has a roll of the dark sea call and swallow up the shore. I sit in the window, three in the morning. I write these lyrics while the moon shines on the sea below. But what I love most of all is the mystery.
and I pick up those napkins and wipe my face and still keep playing this card. I would like you to go, all of you right now. Keep the note. Thank you very much. Go, keep going, keep going. There, we just wrote a song. So there was this Cambodian woman. She lived in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Here, I'm going to flash some white light on the camera. Which one's... Can I do it? Her name was Lacey, and I don't know if her name was like Lacey as in the fabric lace, or if it was Lacey, we never knew. But she had a really nice apartment, but she was very, very odd. And she would very often sleep in the Goodwill box, which they still had in Colorado, you know, five years ago or whatever. And she used to, when I asked her why she would sleep in the Goodwill box, she would tell me that she was afraid the United States was going to come and bomb her. And I would tell Lacey, Lacey, you're in the United States, and we've never been at war with your country anyway. And she'd look at me and mutter to herself, what stupid boy. And then, of course, one day in the world's largest newspaper, the New York Times, was the headline says, the United States waged secret war on Laos and Cambodia. Hmm. So I grabbed the newspaper and I ran to Lacey's apartment. I wanted to tell her that she had been publicly vindicated and apologized to her for always treating her like a wacko. When I got to her apartment door, it was unlocked and ajar. And Lacey was not inside of it. What we did find inside were hundreds of pictures of John F. Kennedy torn out of newspapers and magazines and glued upside down to the bedroom walls. And dozens of Lincoln head pennies Lincoln head facing out, glued to the closet walls, and all the sockets stuffed with wet rice. She had left a couple of large bell jars on the stove, and they had cracked from the heat. She had turned the burners on underneath them. And next to the stove, in this greasy little scrawl, was the words, now I know. No idea what that meant, and we never saw Lacey again. Don't ever know what became of her. This song is called The War Is Over.
face everywhere that I look and see How different the life can truly be when the war is over Now an old guy told me that when you break a string, you just keep playing anyway. Thank you very much. It's not the most important string. It's only a bass D. Of course, every song I'm playing for the rest of the set is in the key of D. Not really, I just made that up to be dramatic. I'm throwing this into the audience now as a souvenir. If you don't catch it, the vacuum cleaner will. I think I'm gonna sit down. So here's a nice song that I wrote. I wrote this song about being in love. It's called She. It's in the key of D. She's got a little horn grows in the middle of her forehead. She's got a line appears on the right side of her mouth when she's crying. She's got a blue ring on her right hand and a carnelian on her left hand. And she blows out a lot of energy when she's crying. But she's always a woman. She's always a woman. She lies awake nights and she longs to be of deep thoughts that run from west to east and she's got a lot of deep emotions running silently from south to north she's got a lot of things to say that usually go unsaid and she often feels like parts of her are dying but she's always a woman she's always a woman she lies awake night and she longs to be free. I'm lost, gonna look for myself If I return before I get back, please ask me to wait Cause I blow out a lot of energy when I'm flying Sometimes she thinks you're right when everything's wrong Sometimes she needs short when everything's wrong And there's no use denying her even when she is wrong She's always a woman, she's always a woman. She taught me all I know about being free. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. So is this microphone picking up? This microphone's picking up all right? I'm going to drink a little water while I tell you the next thing. I'm making a CD right now. In fact, it's almost done. Some of the people in this audience have actually contributed to the making of the CD. And all of you in the audience have a piece of it. I wouldn't believe in what I was doing if it wasn't for you guys, and I wouldn't have had the courage to try this. It's very expensive. The name of the CD is Volcano, and I named the CD Volcano after a song that I wrote, Volcano, three years ago. And I need to disclaim, because I didn't know when I decided to name the CD Volcano um, in November of last year that 1997 would see three new eruptions, two major motion pictures, four PBS specials about volcanoes, and the island of Montserrat blowing to hell after 452 years. I really didn't know. But I'll take all the publicity I can get. This is Volcano.
any other. Can't do that. I lost the string that I need to do that song well. It's true. I really rely on the D string. One more try. Okay. That's the song I'm going to play if we end up with some extra time. So this has been a kind of a fan appreciation night for me, of sorts. When I started out doing this, I didn't believe I could do it. And I had one friend, David, believed I could do it. And then I had two people, and then I had three people. And now I've got a mailing list with several hundred people on it. And they've seen me do good shows and bad shows. And but most of you folks have been to most of my shows. And I just need you to know that no work of art is finished until it is shared. And Winterboy doesn't exist until you come and look at him play. And so I really owe everything to you. And I'm really, really grateful. And if I could make love to every single one of you at the same time, I would. Just so you would know how much I appreciate your support. This is a song about the fear of success. It's brand new, I've only performed it once, so it's pretty risky.
break a string, especially a heavy string like the A string, the tension on the neck changes dramatically and all the strings go out of tune. This is really becoming the gig from hell. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here, but <laughs> I'm learning so much today. tuning box. Actually, it's fine. You don't even need to cue me because I see that there's the clock there and, and I can see it quite clearly. So, all right. So, um, Matt's going to come up here and sing a song while I tune. Matt? That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> if I brought my guitar, I would have. Matt doesn't... Oh, wow. What's going on here? This is really strange. So here, look, this is how it works. When you break a string, can you zoom in on this? <laughs> you go like this, my, where, oh, can we, the red light, isn't the red light the one that's active? <laughs> look at this, the whole string would unwind if it didn't break first. And then you go like this, and then you let it dangle. And people will watch that the whole rest of the set. <laughs> <laughs> How could you guys even hear that? It's horrible. This night, I don't know if I can. On this night, I don't know if I can. Empty moon on the half shell, thin white glaze under the rubber foot. Cold, sterile, sloughing of the wind on this night. I don't know if I can. On this night, I don't know if I can. Too high, higher than I. Empty glitter eyes and a flat blue face. I hear the dogs howl, Lord, or is it suffering sirens across in the city? On this night, I don't know if I can. On this night. I don't know if I can On this night I don't know if I can Don't know if I Can Thank you. 